December, Outshine Film Festival's Fort Lauderdale Virtual Edition, featuring queer films from all over the world. Presenting 18 feature films and three shorts programs, plus a drive-in movie night at Pier 66. Watch the best LGBTQ plus films from home. Tickets are on sale now. Check out the program at outshinefilm.com. Welcome to Outshine's virtual Fort Lauderdale Film Festival. I'm Jen Kritz, the board vice chair, and we're thrilled to be doing the Q&A for my pick of the festival, Through the Glass Darkly. Today, we have the producer, director, and writer of Through the Glass Darkly welcome the fantastic Lauren Fash, and we are also blessed to have the lead actress playing Charlie. Those of you who own a television or grew up in the 80s will know her from, well, everything. Uh, we're very excited to be joined by Robin Lively. Ladies, welcome. Hi. 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 Hello. So first, let's talk about the script. This was co-written, Lauren, by you and your wife. Tell us a little bit about where you got the inspiration to put this together. Yeah, so we started writing the script. Uh, it was about, I think it was 2013. My grandmother had been di diagnosed with dementia. And, you know, I started kind of doing research on that disease. And I was kind of ashamed about the fact that I, what I thought about the disease was was basically, oh, you know, it's like senility and it, it's older, you know, older people kind of losing their minds. But the more research I did, the, I, I came to the conclusion that it was probably the most terrifying thing possible. And so, uh, you know, it, it was something that I that I knew it was a story that I wanted to tell. So that's just kind of how it came about. And because of the fact that it, I, I thought it was so terrifying, I, I figured a psychological thriller was the the proper genre to to tell the story. So that's yeah. And so it started, and then we we spent two and a half years on the script. So, so terrifying on top of terrifying. Yes, pretty much. And this is not your typical lesbian film. It is suspense all the way through. Um, I'm very curious. I read somewhere that your original script actually was written about a man. And at some point you switched it and decided to make it a lesbian story. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, essentially I think I was, I was uh, not that I was being a sellout, but I was really kind of focused on, okay, I, I have commercial taste. I, I love niche stories, but I like, I like movies that appeal to broad audiences. So we wrote the script and uh, one of the producers who was attached to it just said, you know, this isn't working. Like, I don't feel connected to this character. And I think it's because the character, his name was Stan. I didn't feel like I knew him or could give him a voice. So we decided to change it to, you know, and we kind of created Charlie and Charlie was someone who I, felt like I knew, you know, and, and you spend so much time getting to know, like fleshing out these characters. And I put so much, I inserted so much of myself into that character that, you know, it, it felt authentic and I was able to, to write from an honest place. Um, but that being said, you know, I, what you said about the movie, not feeling like a typical gay film, you know, I, I, I wanted it to be a character choice. I didn't want it to be the overall focus of the film. This isn't, you know, a movie, it, it, it's simply just, you know, part of who she is. And it's a very small part of the story. It's not the main focus. Yeah. I think what I love so much about it as well. I love it because you're, you're, you're just looking at, you know, two, you're just looking at a family. You're looking at two people that love each other. And that's what it really is. It's about, it's a love story without it being like, oh, this is a gay film. You went, when I watch it, I, it's, not, it's interesting because I don't even see it. You know, I'm like, you forget that that's what, and, and I think that was actually the intent, you know, and the yeah. goal, which is beautiful. Well, because, you know, I think that the people who need to meet Charlie and empathize with her and, and fall in love with her are, are people who they're not necessarily going to go see a gay movie. Do you know? And I think uh -huh. that in terms of expansion and, and getting more kind of gay stories out there and, and I think it's important to appeal to a broad audience so that, that, you know, the people who aren't, necessarily they don't necessarily have gay friends or, or people in their lives that they know you know that's how they get to know them is through cinema 
Well, and to that point, this uh, film takes place in a town called Elrod, Georgia. First of all, is that a real town? No. Okay, because I Googled it and something came up, but then it didn't really look so real to me. So um, I love that it's in the 90s. It takes place in a place, a small town in Georgia. And here you have a pretty normal lesbian couple. You have a child together, um, seem to have normal lesbian interactions. I mean, just a normal family as, as Robin was talking about. And yet there are a few little mentions here and there where Robin talks about, um, you know, how the, the little girl should refer to her other mommy and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm curious what that was like for both of you trying to portray that in this story. So I think, you know, we, we shot in an Elrod is a fictional place, but where we, we ended up shooting is obviously, you know, a, a real place. And it's some, it's a, it's a small town that I used to visit as a kid. And, uh, the, the truth is, you know, those small towns, time is very much a theme of this film and timelessness. And I think in those small towns, they don't change very much. They don't progress very much over, uh, over a long period of time. And so, uh, I know for me after coming out of the closet, like I was very careful, uh, because I, I was very hyper aware of the fact that the small town, you know, they're not exposed to the same type of things you are in a, in a bigger city. So I, I definitely needed to comment on that in the film because I don't think it would have been authentic not to, um, because it's just a very real part of life. If you live in one of those small towns, you know, the, you're, it's different than, than, you know, living in Los Angeles or even Atlanta, you know, that's, that's uh -huh. a really different experience. Well, Robin, um, first of all, I just have to say I'm a huge fan of yours. I have, I feel like I grew up watching you on television mm -hmm. and in movies, Karate Kid 3. Um, I was actually looking through your filmography and it was like a memory lane of my childhood. <laughs> You've been acting since you were very young. I mean, you were in Punky Brewster, you were in Silver Spoons, you were like in I, at Knight Rider. Every show, and of course, then you know you did a lot of. I mean, I, I I have a list somewhere here, but it's it's crazy. You have acted every single year of your life, pretty much. I mean, to have such an enormous body of work, and in such a difficult career, and it's absolutely fantastic. So I just wanted to do a little wow, Robin. So thrilled to meet you. That does mean a lot to me. Thank you, and it's such a pleasure to meet you as well. And. I honestly, that does not get past me. I am aware of it. I recognize it. And I'm so grateful and appreciative to still have a career. And I've been able to, you know, make all the all the changes from childhood to the teenage years to young adult to the mom roles to, you know, mid 40s and all of that. It's like I, I feel super fortunate to have been able to make those transitions and still be doing what I love so much. That's absolutely amazing. And Lauren, my, my understanding was that Robin auditioned for this and you saw one video of her and threw all the other auditions out. Yeah, I didn't even watch them. I, I, so <laughs> tell us about how you and Robin decided to work together on this. Well, I, I was already in pre-production in Atlanta. So I was already in the offices and, uh, you know, I had the casting directors put a handful of actresses. I don't, I don't know how many they ended up uh, taping, but I said, please, please put some people on tape for me. And they, they sent, it was a Friday night and they sent, um, I don't know. I think it was like six or seven auditions and they said, okay, here, here are the best ones. Tell us what you think. And I saw Robin. I was like, okay. And I clicked on it and um, it was like a movie moment in itself. I mean, I, I was completely, blown away. I just was like, who is this person? You know, and I'm, I'm just sitting there watching this and uh, you know, the producers were in, in the office with me. They were, they were arguing and it was kind of a chaotic scene. And I just told everybody to shut up. I was like, you have to show, look at the, watch this. We, you know, we found her, we found Charlie. And I was just like, you know, I called the casting directors. I'm like, who is this? Aww. Like, I, you know, it was, it was hands down the best audition I've ever seen. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. it was so surreal. It was such a surreal moment to spend, two and a half years creating someone and then to watch the perfect 
performance, like the way she just, you know, breathed life into her lungs. I don't know. It was, it was, it was insane. And I, I don't think anybody could have played her after I saw that. So I got lucky that she said yes. <laughs> well, and Robin, this is such a different character. Yes. I mean, she's intense. And <laughs> you, I, as, under, as I understand it, are the opposite of this character. You really had to go into this you know, role. What was that like preparing? What was that like? Yeah. She laughs at me all the time. She's like, oh, you're just, your hands, you do your hands all the time. Her mannerisms, manner. I always, <laughs> she's I always like, like, no. uh, <laughs> Yeah, but we always laugh because my, she laughs at my mannerisms are very feminine. Um, and it's <laughs> because I, I, when I read the audition, I was like, ooh, South, I love that. Cause I'm originally from Georgia and, um, I continued reading it and I was reading the everything about it, the breakdown and and then the the the, the scenes and I thought, eh, okay, well, I, I I always say this job. I'm never gonna get this. I'll never get it, but I'm all in. I'll do what I, you know, just enjoy the process and, and do my best. And then I went in for the audition and it was it was one of those auditions that really stood out from the rest where I was like, wow, that was that was one of my best auditions. Like in the moment I just felt super connected and it just happened and it just felt really good. So um, when I got a call that she wanted to talk like the next day, I was not totally surprised, but at the same time I was like, wow, okay. Well, I mean, I guess if she buys this, I'm all in. And then I cut my hair and just things that I would, that helped me as, as the actor be able to more, fully submerge myself into the, the role and the character because it is, I mean, we are night and day, but there are still some similarities that I can relate to with Charlie. Um, I kind of have to always do that. I have, there has to be a little bit of me in, in there. And um, I relate to her in so many levels, but we are complete opposites. <laughs> and your character play is fantastic. You are so immersed in this film and this truly is my pick of the festival. I loved everything, the acting, the story, and the plot twists. And I, we, you know, agreed we're not going to get into too many of that. And we don't want to have any spoilers. But there are some scenes that are so intense about you, you know, whether it, oh, we should be talking, of course, about your co-star, yes. Chanel Captain. Yeah. Yes. The two of you playing together, Aww. it was astounding. She, and especially, you know, as we were talking about how you go through these plot twists later and you, and you think about, you know, how this, when, well, speaking of that, again, I'm, I'm being very cautious of not saying the wrong thing, but we were talking earlier about Easter eggs. So Lauren, tell us a little bit about how you planned for this film to have Easter eggs for those who may watch it twice. Yeah, I mean, I think my, my favorite filmmakers, you know, they, they, they have a tendency to, you know, call them Easter eggs where, where the second time you watch a film, you, you notice, you pick up on these little things that, you know, that you, you wouldn't have, if you didn't know what was coming next. Um, so we, I, I did that, I, I was very, conscious about that in the, in the writing phase. Um, and also on set, you know, we would, I had a brilliant cinematographer, Damien Haran. Uh, he and I just, you know, mesh. And uh, so we were constantly trying to think, and, 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 and Dara Watson, my production designer as well, like constantly trying to think of little hints that we could do and ways of kind of playing with the audience's mind, but not cheating. You know, you want to, you want to insert it without it being obvious, but you also don't want to take it too far because then it's a cheat. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope that, that people pick up on them, but I, it will definitely require a second viewing, I think. Uh -huh. And I wanted to also ask you about the title, mm -hmm. Through the Glass Darkly, which is a Bible verse from Paul, I believe. How did you come up with that? Uh, well, it, it, was, it was part of the plot. I mean, it essentially, when, when you're you know, developing these characters and, and trying to figure out, you know, again, like plot twists and, and how you're going to have everything culminate to this, you know, climax and, and, and finale. And so I just tried to think about thematically what the story was about. 
and and what I was trying to say. And I think if if you read that quote, you know, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, uh, you know, to me that that really underscores the entire theme of the film. You know, so we chose to make it the title. <laughs> And of course it takes place in a small town where you feel there would be that aspect throughout society. I mean, it's it's really, really well tied together. And the Robin, nature of Charlie, you know, just that character. I mean, to me, yeah. that's, that is an explanation of the character and the journey that she goes through. So that was, yeah. Robin, what is it that you take away from the film? Having done so many films, but is there anything in particular about this film? that you learned about yourself or that you took away? Well, oh, wow. There, there are so many things I, I learned. Um, I, I loved having the opportunity mainly, uh, well, to be given this opportunity to play this role, the role of Charlie um, was such an honor for me. I mean, the script was so beautiful, but then to have the end result be like one million times better than anything you could have ever imagined. And that's because of her, um, she's so talented. Um, the script was so beautifully written by, by Susan and Fash. And it's just, I, I learned so much. Oh gosh, <laughs> I, I don't even, I don't see like, I don't even know where to begin, but it gave me, um, oh. I love. I, I honestly like. I fell in love with my with my character with Charlie. I honestly like. I loved her to my core, and um, I I grew to just. I I knew her pain. I knew who she was. I knew what she she was experiencing, and um, it was interesting to be able to do that. And 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 uh, I don't know. I've never been in a situation like like she's she she was, and so many people are in. And I can only imagine how difficult that must be. So you just want to have your family and love your wife and love your child. And, and unfortunately that's not the case for so many people. So I learned to have a lot more empathy and compassion for, for families like that um, among many other things, but <laughs> it was such an honor to be able to, to play this role. I was, oh, I was so happy. I was like, I can't believe. And the fact that she was always so excited and everyone, you know, all the producers were so wonderful. And the fact that they kept giving me such positive reinforcement gave me the um, confidence to, to, to do my best and to be my best and to believe that I could do this, to believe that I could embody this person that is such a departure of anything I've ever done or who I am innately. Um, so I really give you a ton of the credit for that because she set a tone that made me feel really safe and and everyone everyone did so not to brag on her too much but you know she was in every scene of the film and she got the script i don't know two weeks before we started filming uh, so, <laughs> so and and that being said there wasn't a single take that i couldn't use so it's just like a testament to her strength as an actor to be, not only you know embody a different human being but then to be so consistent in her performance it was really I mean, the the end result is impressive, but I wish you could just see the dailies, how impressive that was as well. I'm just saying. That's really sweet. But I could not have done it without that kind of reinforcement and confidence and knowing that she wrote it and believed in me. So it was like, you are it, you this, you are the person. It, it was, it just couldn't have happened any other way because I think honestly, I would have been second guessing myself or I would have felt insecure about my choices had she not been directing, hadn't written it, you know? What was that like for you, Lauren, seeing Robin playing exactly what you had in mind for that role? I mean, it's the most like humbling, you know, I I can't even like express it. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it was surreal, you know, it was, and the, the funny thing too is I would call cut and then Robin would appear and she'd be like, I think, you know, I was like, <laughs> what the, I, because I didn't, I didn't know her before, you know, I, I yeah. got to know her on set. I mean, we had a week of rehearsals before we shot. So that was a little bit of time spent together, but I didn't know her. So, you know, it was honestly like working with Jekyll and Hyde. It was like these <laughs> two people, you know, it was like one on camera and then she would appear. And I was just like, what the hell? Yeah, I mean, it, it threw me, you know, and, and since obviously we've known each other for a while now, but um yeah, no, it was it was incredible. I mean, and literally that moment that I saw her, it was like, you know, when you meet someone, you feel like you've known them forever. Like you spend two and a half years trying to come up with this character and then they there they are. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you've known them, 
you know, your whole life. And it was, it was like meeting a family member, if that makes That's sense. That's so neat, yeah. yeah. This is your first full length feature, am I right, Lauren? Yeah. And you got this huge high caliber cast <laughs> to direct. I mean, what an amazing, and, and an amazing film to come out of your first feature. I mean, absolutely. Congratulations on that right there. So we how many days of filming was it? It was 27 days of filming. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah, <laughs> and we needed it, you know, it was, we were shooting in the, in the middle of winter in Georgia. Um, and a lot of the script, we had to, you know, we had to do a lot of, not rewrites, but as any low budget film, you've got to make do with what you have. And, and I had all these dreams of night exteriors and, and, you know, so, so we did do, you know, we did do a lot of kind of adjusting there. So yeah, but 27 days for a first time director. I know I'm spoiled. I'm, I'm, I'm persistent at, you know, getting what I want. And that was what I wanted. I had to have time to, to make it good. You know, and I think that that's, I had to have rehearsals. I, I cannot shoot without rehearsals. I just don't, it doesn't work for me. You know, that was how I was taught and that's all I know. And, and I also know that to ask an actor to take on something this heavy, I have to give them the time that they need to, to, to do it. And it still was, was rushed, man. Like it wasn't like, you know. Trying to learn those lines. Whew. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, it was it was hardcore. But yeah, it was it was a pretty, you know, comfortable shooting schedule, I would say. Now, Lauren, you've worked with Christopher Nolan. Yeah, I worked, I mean, with I don't know about I I worked under him. I was <laughs> I was like the little guy. Uh but yeah, I with it just sounds so much better, doesn't I it? I know, <laughs> yeah. He's like, who the sure hell does. is that? Uh, <laughs> But I, I would creep on that set and watch him work with Wally mm -hmm. Pfister. That was uh, on Inception and on, on Dark Knight Rises. That was like the only, I was the worst PA in history. I mean, I have no idea how I, how they, I don't know what, how I kept that job. But um, yeah, I just wanted to watch them work and see their their process and how, how they do it. I think every director, you know, they, they, they do things differently. And for me, that relationship between director and DP is so important because for me, I love actors. I love working with actors. I don't like to sit behind the camera and focus on the technical. I want my DP to do that. You know, we have discussions and prep and that's why prep to me is so important so that I can say, okay, you know exactly what I want. Here are my storyboards. We've already had this discussion, you know, the blocking. And then I just go get to do my work with them and with the act and stay with them. And I don't, do you know what I mean? I, otherwise, it's too distracting. I can't spend all my time talking to art. I have to be, they have to just, when you're in it, you have to go, you know? So, yeah. When did you guys film this? Obviously before COVID. Yeah, we filmed in 2018. So we had 164 VFX shots. So we were in post for, for quite a while, uh, but wow. it was 2018. So we wow. have each other forever at this point. Sure do. <laughs> Well, it's, it looks like you're living together, which I think is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, quarantining yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> I felt so bad though, because I'm just, I'm getting windows and they're working and they're like walking behind us. So my apologies, <laughs> but we just like, we like to do these together because it's so awkward. Yeah. Um, honestly, this is brand new for me. And, and the first one we did, and Shanola was like, ma'am, I'm not gonna do another one of those. No, thank you. So she was out because it was just the lag time. And then this, it was just, you know, we just find that it's a lot easier. And we we, we like each other. Yeah, We're like, sure. she's all right. Yeah. We've been such good friends. And I, obviously you can tell the chemistry between me and Shanola. And uh, that's why the mat, that's why part of a major part of why this, this story and the film works so well is because of the chemistry. Yeah. Um, I have now, I've made lifetime friends with Shinola and Kinsley and just everyone. And well, obviously you, <laughs> um, and that's really rare because my life is full. I, I, I have a, a, I have three kids. I have, you know, I'm married. I've got, my life is, my hands are constantly full. So for me to take on these new friendships, I don't have time for that. <laughs> but Shinola, the minute I met Shinola, I was, ah, oh, she's a light, isn't she? Just oh, like, yeah. she'd show up she's on awesome. set and I felt so grateful to have her by my side and championing me and supporting me. And, 
And that the love that we have for each other is so apparent in the film. And it just radiates off the screen, I think, anyway. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, just, oh, I love her so much. The, the, some of the main directing I did would be like, all right, you guys are just a little, you love each other too much. It's not, <laughs> it's not in the script. Like, yeah. yeah. Pull, back. pull back. Just tone yeah. it down tone a little bit. I'm like, down. oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> but that's yet another reason why this is such an unusual film for our audience, because it is not, while it's, you have such amazing chemistry together, the two of you, it is not about a love story between the two of you. And the way it's written, just you have so much respect for both of these characters and, and how you work together and how everything unfolds. It Everything makes so much sense. It's oh, my pick of the festival. I love this festival. I love this film. So I wanted to ask you, COVID hit, obviously, how has that affected both of you? I mean, you know, Robin, especially you're going film to film to film to film, show to show. What what happened when COVID hit for you? Oh, everything stopped. Literally, yeah. and I started um, organizing a lot. <laughs> um, but we started working again, you know, recently, which has been really nice. But wow, what a different I, I can't even begin to tell you. It's like night and day from what I'm used to. I'm miking myself, I'm doing my own hair, my own makeup I'm bringing. And this is, these are like big budget projects, you know, it's not, and, and this is, we're getting tested every day. Everyone's in full PPE and you're in your little separated partitioned um, pods and um, it's pretty wild, but, <laughs> but honestly, like, yeah, it's, who could have ever imagined this in a million years, but, um, Especially for actors, you have to create that intimacy with one another. And socially mm -hmm. now, we're we're not even hugging our friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, much less people we, we don't know that well, especially right. on the first few days of shooting. What's yeah, it like for you, Lauren? Mm -hmm. I decided to have some knee surgeries. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this has been a fun year. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I think it's I've, I've just been trying to work on scripts and I spent most of the summer in the park or, or working on scripts. So that's kind of, uh, yeah. Check it out. Yeah. I'm We're going to shut that door really real quick. quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, I think, I think for me, I, I would find it very difficult to film. There's so much chaos in filming. Um, and I enjoy the chaos, but I think to, uh, to an extent, <laughs> I think that, the pressure of COVID would probably send me over the edge. Um, so yeah, I've just been focusing on on scripts and and projects and developing, and um, I'm excited about some of them. So should be fun. Wow. So I understand you have a comedy coming up. I do. I, I wrote a coming of age comedy, which is uh, about as far from this as you can get. <laughs> which do you prefer? <laughs> Suspense. You are Robin. You're in it. Oh heck yeah! Well, she was. You know, when we film it, I wrote a part for her. <laughs> As you should. Yeah. So, so what do you prefer doing? And, and this is a question for both of you. What do you prefer, suspense or comedy? Suspense. Suspense. Well, for me, I think you know, comfort wise. Yeah, and and mm -hmm. watching suspense for sure. What about you, Robin? I really love both. I love drama. I love comedy. Um, with drama, I, I find it's a lot more, um, it pushes me a little bit more. Um, so sometimes I'm like, oh, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but I really do love both. It just depends on the story. And I wanted to make, I wanted to tell you one other thing. Um, when you sign on as an actor, when you start, sign on to an independent film, you never know what you're going to get. You could pretty much guarantee you're going to be working with like, just a bunch of jokers. I don't mean to be mean, <laughs> but generally speaking, you're just like, oh, really? Like I had one one independent film I did, and the AD was basically put herself in the scene with us. She was just off the edge of frame, but sat there and just sat there and had snacks and just was watching the show. And I and I had to stop and say, I'm so sorry, but can you can you please not be sitting in the scene with us? <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's what you expect. So. I had no idea. So I can't tell you what a joy this whole process has been and to be able to work with people that are so talented. She's so talented. <laughs> she's going to be, she's going to be huge. She's going to be super famous. Oh boy. So you better put me in all your movies. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, ladies, thank you so much for taking the time to join us at Outshine for this Q&A. Again, this is one of the most fantastic films of the festival. We're so proud to have had Robin Lively and Lauren Fash here. We're going to end with a preview of the film, a trailer, and uh, and just a big thank you, thank you, ladies, so much for coming out and uh, supporting us and putting together such a fantastic film. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys thank for, you having for having us. us. That was so great. Yeah, thank you. Fun. Thank you. Listen to me. We're always going to be together. <laughs> Melody Carmichael, granddaughter of Mama Whiskey's founder, Sherry Mama Carmichael, has officially been declared a missing person. The young teen was last seen on Ridgewood Road late yesterday. The girl's only a couple years older than Lily. We aren't even looking for Lily anymore. The thing is, I think the kidnappings are related somehow. I'm a reporter. So you were hoping I'd lead you right to her, is that it? Absolutely. You need me. The way I see it, you got a target on your back. You need to be looking for the person who wants to hurt little girls. I believe I am. You want to know the best part about being sheriff in this town? I ain't got to be there to keep an eye on you. Everybody's watching. But it's really because he knows the value of a secret. Time passes and it becomes part of you. And you're just as guilty because you kept quiet. I know that I've been messed up lately and I've been seeing some strange things, but I would never hurt my daughter. Can you find me there? Y'all gonna know soon enough.